I'm excited to have back with us singer-songwriter Eddie Lamb, and he's back to talk about his latest music projects, and he's going to be singing us a song, so stay tuned. Welcome! Oh, good to see you again, Christine. How is everything going? It's going well, you know, virtually speaking, because here we are. Remember, we did our interview at the BC Sports Hall of Fame, and I don't know how long ago was that. Like that maybe- I think that was over a year ago in middle of January, actually, if I recall. Yeah, so, but it's great to have you back. And so how are you coping? Well, I, I tell you, this was such an interesting journey for me. Uh, I mean, the last time I ever did a public show with a live band uh, was back in the beginning of of February, which was pretty much a year ago. Uh, and that was with my band Cry of Silence. Uh, we had a, a very successful show where we did the uh, a theme party where it was called Hats, Wigs, and Helmets Day. And so people can wear like helmets, homemade, uh, you know, homemade hats or, you know, anything, you know, quirky just to make the day fun, right? And then we actually had a great lineup of, of amazing acts, you know, uh, I mean, my band Crash Sons, we headlined uh, the night, but then, no, actually, no, we, we were the second last band, but then we had some other amazing uh, bands that were playing that night as well. And then we had a uh, contest to see who had the best headwear for the, spe- for the occasion. And uh, it was just by audience vote, and we just gave away some prizes, and it was just a great time. And this was at uh, a really cool uh, venue in New West called the New West Front, and it's like a, a rehearsal space slash live music venue. And that was the last time I, I ever you know, put uh, put together a live show before uh, the pandemic hit. But uh, one of the last concerts I've, I've been to, that I've attended just as a fan, I went to see uh, uh, this band called Set It Off at the, uh, not the Biltmore in downstairs, but there's like a Biltmore uh, uh, hall, uh, like a concert hall like in the upstairs area too. So it that was the last time I've ever been to a concert before this all went down as well. And then the last other public show was in the middle of March. I was doing piano karaoke night at Cafe de Soleil. Oh. And that was when, and that was like in when the pandemic news was starting to kind of hit a little bit. Uh, and so at that time, we were just being very cautious too, uh, you know, with, with our gear and everything just in case. And but that was it. That was like my last public show before uh, the shutdowns happened. And ever since then, it's been a different experience for me uh, just to be uh, focusing just on recording content and just posting on my YouTube channel for now. And that's all we could do in the meantime. But honestly, it's been such an interesting experience because this was an opportunity for not just myself, but even my uh, like bandmates and other musician friends. You know, we've been trying to hit international because now that we're just going mm-hmm. virtual in the meantime, this is an opportunity for us to just connect with musicians who are out there in the United States, uh, in Europe, Asia, all across the globe. You name it. You know, we try to connect with these kinds of people. But, you know, you were saying about connecting globally with other musicians. And I mean, I see you on socials. I see you on Facebook and you become a TikTok star. So yeah, it, huh, it it's such an interesting experience for me because I think what what happened was I just decided to just you know make something useful out of TikTok. You know, I, I mean, everyone has used it for different various reasons, right? Uh, whether it be just you know random tomfoolery or they uh, just find some other creative ways because the platform is so different, right? Because you know how with YouTube you you have. You know, um, unlimited amounts of uh, create, creative ways you can do things to produce a video. But with TikTok, it, you only have one minute to present something. You have one minute max. Oh. Yeah, that's that's the premise of it. So uh, so I, des- I, des- I decided to come up with the idea of how people can learn how to play songs on a guitar in just under one minute. And that it, it was just something I just casually thought of, but I never knew it would pick up so fast. And uh, and what encouraged me was that uh, a few of my friends who who we follow each other on TikTok, uh, one of my friends, uh, Becky, she said to me, I really like the series. You should keep going with this. And I thought, all right, why not? <laughs> yeah. 
I'm like, why not? And so I decided to just go forward with that and uh, just create some uh, more videos on how to play these songs uh, in its entirety in just under one minute. Because a lot of songs, they just play the same chords over and over again. And you can go on autopilot if you want. And it turned out really good. And there's like a good handful of songs that do that. And, you know, sometimes I would come across some ideas, whether it be going through my cover bands catalog list, or I would even hear a song on the radio. And I'd be like, oh, right, I forgot about that song. Okay, I'll teach that one on, on my TikTok as well. And so it creates such a really great buzz uh, that it got to the point where you know, I had like other podcasters uh, interview me as well, like it, it, some that are not from this country. You know, I had a, American podcasters that interviewed me. I've even had, um, I, I, I even, uh, but then I also recently had coverage from uh, Burnaby Now, which I was just like, wow, this is so. You know, just so cool just being able to get this kind of uh, coverage. And again, this was something that I just did not expect to, to happen in, you know, in such a short matter of time. But uh, someone explained to me uh, it was because uh, people want to learn things, uh, especially musicians. They do want to uh, either if it's like a beginner musician that just wants to learn a song uh, because they're just starting out. Or maybe it's a cover artist who just wants to build their set list once once live music becomes a thing again, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, yeah, here's some easy ones for you that you can learn in just a short matter of time and just go from there. And I could not believe the type of impact it makes on people. But I've also utilized TikTok recently to um, uh, play piano. Uh, so I would just like play little like uh, uh, little snippets of, of popular songs on piano and then what TikTok does is that it has this duet feature where uh, a singer can just click on a duet feature and then they record themselves singing along to my piano playing. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's which, so much fun. Which, which actually circles back to what I was doing originally, uh, which was piano karaoke night. And also, of course, um, with my cover band, we've done live band karaoke night as well. And so this comes in full circle in that kind of way, which is almost like a, a substitute virtual version of that kind yeah. of experience for the time being. But I I think people are really enjoying that that feature as well. And so at least that's a way for me to to jam with not only our local singers here in Vancouver uh, using that app, but just connecting with different people even across the globe as well, like different singers who may have similar interests who love that song. And they're like, oh, my goodness, I got to sing that one with, with this guy. And so I get some some really cool singers out there who just sing along to my piano videos. And I was just really happy to see uh, such a connection being made, you know, and I think we're at this point now where we're trying to create this really awesome online community of music lovers. That's wonderful. And will you keep doing it when the pandemic is over? Oh yes, you bet I will. I, I think I think because like I'm I'm seeing so much uh results of just people connecting, you know, like worlds colliding in such a positive way. Uh, you know, I it, it's you know it, it would be a shame that if the once everything reopens again and goes back to normal, you know, that it just goes away just like that. I really feel like this is something that can elevate us to a whole new level, uh, in not just in terms of of uh community members of the music scene following each other, but just being able to know, wow, now you have people out there in, you know, Brazil or in Europe or in Australia, New Zealand, who, who love what you're doing and they'll follow you. It's like, you know, maybe if maybe there are, and there are people out there who may not have a Vancouver following, but th they may have fans out there in New York city, for example, who, who mm. may enjoy their stuff. Yeah, so this could be like the well, the future, right, of, mm -hmm. of music entertainment. And so you're coping well. I mean, I think that you know you're multi-talented. You're not only a, a singer songwriter. You you play the piano. You play the guitar. What else do you do? <laughs> I well, I also um uh like play play the drums, and oh. I've also played play bass guitar as well. And I think I mentioned to you last year, I, I remember 2019 was such an interesting year for me where I've been getting uh, gigs playing the electric bass. And I remember I remember that my wife uh, saw me. Uh, we were at a jam night one time, right, And uh, which was led by uh, one of my good friends and who I consider as a mentor uh, named Sammy. And Sammy uh, got me to play bass with him at the open mic jams. And then uh, my wife said, 
you know, you should be playing Vesa a bit more often. Uh, maybe if, you know, you, you talk to Sammy or uh, other people, uh, you may get more jobs that way, right? And and so I did. And 2019 was really that year where I've I've done some uh, bass playing gigs with my with my friend Sammy, uh, with his band at the apartment, who are really talented people as well. And it's such a great experience uh, no, just playing different roles. But it, it helps me understand how... Uh, it, how each instrument complements each other when it comes to playing songs. And that's the thing I love about that. Uh, playing drums, I haven't done that gig-wise in a long time, but I, I really feel like once uh, once uh, we have uh, more time to be able to you know, even gather with people again, I would just love to go to a jam and just play drums with people uh, just for the fun of it. Um, I'm sure every musician has expressed how it can be frustrating to not play with people because you know no. when you're in a ba you know, your band is pretty much like your second family basically right the, the the and and same thing when you go to open mics and jam nights that's your community right there but it, with gatherings not happening in the meantime you know we're hoping uh that when once this once it happens again it's gonna we're gonna be in full force but i think by that time too i bet you anything people's skills will probably be upgraded to a whole new level as well Yes. And we need music in our we lives do. and even more so, you know, for mental health, you know, the connection exactly. with music and mental health. So, oh, yeah. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. And, and, uh, but I would say the one thing I, uh, skill wise, you know, just, just from what I was saying earlier, how uh, people's skills may be upgraded, uh, during the, uh, during the, the time off, uh, for me, I was really thankful that I've been learning a lot on recording as well, because, uh, I mean, right now, you know, like for me, like I, I play, try to play it safe. If I want to record a song, I, I feel like it's uh, it's not quite safe to go to studios. Yeah, at least just that's just for me. But mm -hmm. uh, but thankfully, with all the recording gear that I already have and the software that I have, I've been trying to upgrade my my skills on on recording, audio editing, and all that. And so that helped me uh, push me to release stuff online on my YouTube channel, on uh, other online platforms as well, on Spotify and all that. So I was really happy to be able to experience that as well. But it also helps me sympathize a lot more with audio engineers because they put in so much work and uh, they put in so much effort. They Their production skills uh, are, it's pretty much like, like all the popular records you hear. It's just, it's the result of so much uh, hard work and dedication, not not just hours of it, but like maybe months, years, mm -hmm. right? Years of experience, basically. And that's the thing I love uh, about it is it helps me appreciate so much of what professional producers do and how much they go through and probably how much they put up with because yeah. not all musicians are, are easy to work with, right? And so uh, just being able to figure out the technical side of things to uh, make something sound better, to make things stand out, how to make an instrument or make a singer shine. That has been such a great learning experience for myself. Just, you know, just using my own personal musical abilities to just experiment with how I can make things happen. Right. And luckily I was able to even, uh, Col collaborate with my bandmates uh virtually too for now um because my, my band cries sounds we released a new song uh back in june and i was really uh happy to experience such a cool thing where my guitar player and i you know like we were just you know doing doing things on, on our own time but we still send each other the music files so my guitar player sent me, sends me his parts and so i just put that in there and i have to make sure it sounds nice uh so it's it's interesting how technology takes you to such uh, an opportunity to do something like this but you know because back in the i'm sure back in the olden days uh i mean who knew like i'm sure just uh, like i don't know how they do it but i'm but i'm just so <laughs> glad that, I, i'm just so thankful we have this opportunity now with this kind of technology we have just to uh put things together uh because i know we can't see each other in person at the moment but at least i can i can say that uh it doesn't stop us from making things happen it doesn't does not stop us from keep making content basically mm -hmm. and learning learning new skills and learning and learning yeah awesome and then you're going to be playing a song i can't I wait i will be yes i will yes um and the song i will be playing to you is that song that we released uh back in june yes do you want to go for it now <laughs> let's do it yes let me grab my guitar first okay all right 
Oh, what kind of guitar is that? That's oh, the... Uh, so this brand is called Wishbone, and I've researched it. Uh, apparently, uh, these guys are based in Vancouver. Wow. Yeah, wow. and this is it's a really nice acoustic guitar. And so I, I bought this, I think, back in late, late 2019. And it was such, and the thing was, I w my plan was to use this thing all, whenever I go to open mic night. So that was my 2020 plan. But because <laughs> of, of everything happening around the globe right now, you know, we can't make that happen. But... Um, but it still has been really handy for me when I, uh, when I like do, uh, when I do my recordings. And so this has been my go-to guy for, uh, all the recordings you've heard on my YouTube channel lately. That's wonderful. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> all right. Are you ready for this? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So this song is called, uh, December 31st. I don't want you near. Or no, sorry, don't want you near December uh, bracket December thirty worst, which is uh, loosely based on a true story about somebody who got stood up on New Year's Eve. Oh. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we're hoping that one day, you know, once uh, the pandemic ends, I'm hoping you know, if I ever have the time, I would love to make a music video out of this, where you know, um, you know, a gr uh, girl uh, gets ready for a date with a guy for New Year's Eve, and then uh, she finds out like the guy cheats on him, uh, cheats on her, and she gets mad, and then she meets up with a. Uh, uh, a guy she turned on originally and she ends up being happy with that guy. So. Wow. Why not a video, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, so here it is. Uh, so the song's called don't want you near. Can you hear it? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Was counting down to another year, the time to celebrate. But the night ended with loneliness, the way we all would hate. She asked herself, What's the use? Will she have some lame excuse? She would let it go, but now she's gonna yell. Hoping he would be on time or just a little late But he never showed his face Now he's just a big disgrace She would let it go but now she's gonna yell
good. I had I one didn't want to you know, do a bit of dancing here on the chair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, I would encourage that for sure. I would. <laughs> Thank you so nice. much. Eddie, and um, I'll be seeing you on, on the Facebook, you know, Sounds good. We'll see each other on social media. Again, thank you so much, Christine. I really, really appreciate everything oh, you're keep doing. doing what you're doing, you know? Thank you. You as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bye for now. Okay. All right. Thanks. Take okay. care. You too. Bye. How was it? It was initially kind of intimidating. I think when the idea... When the script was sent to me, I thought, you know, this is just, just as a thought, it's, it's kind of scary. Uh, it's not something you want to get wrong. Um, and there's just so much there. How is he going to be covered? How do you represent this person? Uh, he's such a huge figure in history. Uh, how do you represent him over eight hours? Um, but then, you know, I, I read the script and, and, and I thought Frank did a wonderful job at trying to get to, it's, it's not just a historical you know, best of, here's what he did. We're trying to get to, to um, the emotional center, maybe, of who this person was. We can look up, you know, we can read the books and we can do the research and find out about all the work he did and who he did it with and when he did it. But we, we want to, I think there was, um, we were looking to get to uh, an emotional center of something. So I felt like that's what Frank had given us with the script. And then immediately you just feel a little, uh, I certainly felt a little hammer about the situation because I thought he's humanizing this um, historical figure, this genius, um, this legend, mythical figure almost. Uh, and he's making him in, into a, a man um, or returning him to that. Um, so I thought like, this is something we can tackle. Hey!